Good morning, this is Matt with Arvada Rentals. Um, uh, we are homeowner and contractor equipment, rental and repair. Uh, to this morning we're going to be talking about an airless sprayer, which a lot of times is an exciting job, mainly just because you're almost done with your remodel. Usually once you have an airless sprayer, you're getting ready to paint the walls and put some carpet in, somebody's going to be happy. That being said, um, airless sprayers can be cantankerous from time to time. They're wonderful machines to use they, uh, for the ease of the job. However, a lot of times the startup and the cleanup process can be very difficult for people. It will take a lot of times more time to clean the machine than it did to do the job. It's disheartening, but it's the case. Now moving on, what we're gonna do on this machine here, we're gonna act like we're spraying latex today. This is just a standard airless sprayer. Most companies are gonna run this commercial grade sprayer. Um, and this is, a, uh, this is a Graco airless sprayer. You'll notice right here is a primer knob. It has two positions. One position is straight down, which when this knob is in the straight down position, you're drawing water up this big metal tube in the center of the machine. It's gonna circulate it throughout the motor and it's gonna drop that, that dirty water out this purge line here, which you can set into a waste bucket that I have set aside right here. When this is down, there's no pressure at all on your gun. You have no pressure at the hose, which is where we want to be for safety purposes just getting started. Now when you're cleaning an airless or priming an airless, it's best done with the tip out of the gun itself. Um, that way you're creating a straight stream and we're not adding a fan to that cleaning process. This machine here is about 2,000, 2,500 PSI. If you do come in contact with your skin, it can damage, it can hurt you pretty bad. And if that's the case, you need to get looked at. Um, there, you introduce some oxygen and some foreign objects into your bloodstream um, at a high velocity of pressure. So that being said, always be very careful with these machines while you're using them. Right now I have uh, four gallons of warm water. I'm just gonna flush out this system again. I'm gonna flush this motor first with that primer in the down position. I'm gonna turn on the machine and I'm watching to make sure I'm getting a prime out of that machine, which is gonna be difficult to see. If I bring it in front of the camera here, you'll be able to see that I'm priming up through that plastic tube there. Now. Every once in a while at the beginning of your job, you may have a difficult time getting this machine primed up to give you water or paint out of that tube. If that's the case, there could be a couple things going on. One, we might have a bad packing, which means it's gotten worn down and it's not picking up that pressure like it normally had. More often than not, however, what you're running into is there's a check ball right inside this throat here that's not allowing the water to pass through there to create a vacuum or a, or a, a suction to pull that water up to, the, to that prime tube. And what you would do there is with the machine running, just like that, you would briskly tap right underneath your bucket holder to break that ball free. Once you start seeing water prime through here after you've tapped that, then we know that we have freed that ball up and we've now primed our motor and we can think about priming our pressure hose. So we've primed our motor. Now I'm gonna take my, my pressure gun here and with that lever still in the down position, I'm gonna squeeze the trigger and point it into my waste bucket. I'm gonna turn on the machine and flip this lever to the forward position. Once I'm in the forward position, I now have pressure, pressure to my gun. Okay? I'm not seeing any leaks around my gun, so now I can shut down and I can test my tip. I can test the tip of the gun before I check with paint to make sure I'm not plugged up or there's any issues. The way that this tip goes in is there's a small notch on the tip there's also a notch on the tip of the gun. Those two notches will mate together. The tip presses all the way down flush into the gun and the arrow will be pointing in the forward position or away from the tip of the gun. 
that's your spray position. Now if I was spraying with this and it started to act up or I started to get a, an uneven spray, chances are there's a little piece of junk that made it into the orifice of that tip. What you can do then is turn that arrow back towards you and that changes the spray orifice, it widens it up so that you can blow that junk through there um, to clear that tip out. After a short spray, real quick, couple passes through that open orifice tip, then we can come back to our spray position and that in turn will widen our fan and come back to our spray mode. Whenever you're using one of these machines, you're always going to make sure that you start far enough away from the wall and work yourself closer until you're getting your desired effect without, without uh, overspray or really puddling up on the wall. Nice even spray. Now if I, uh, I've now washed this machine out, I know I have fresh water throughout the line. My tip is working properly, my gun is holding pressure, my machine is building pressure. Um, all systems are now go for paint, at which time now what I would do is I would put this waste tube back into the bucket. I'm going to lean this machine back onto its back. I can now move this bucket off of the foot there and out of the way. And I'm going to bring my five gallon latex or oil based paint bucket right underneath here. Lift this guy up. This tube will now go into your spray bucket, your paint bucket, or your oil bucket, whatever you're spraying. Um, that will help as an agitator as you work. Again, we're coming down on our pressure to make sure that we have all pressure off of this system before I think about grabbing that gun again. To prime up again, now with paint or stain, I will remove this tip so I have a better spray pattern, a straight spray, and I'm going to spray right into that bucket. Whatever water I have in there will not hurt because all I'm doing is thinning that paint and making it a little easier for this machine to draw. That being said, I'm starting down in that prime position again. I wait till I see paint coming through that plastic tube. I squeeze the trigger on my gun, point it into the paint bucket at a safe distance away from the paint, and I will bring that lever back up to the pressure position until I start seeing paint coming through my gun at which case I come back down to my prime, relieving that pressure from the gun so I can install the tip. I'll turn my machine off so I know I have no power at the machine. There's no danger. And I can, again, reinstall my tip, come to that forward position, quick down on prime, quick up to pressure, and now I'm off and running. It's very important that when you're working with an airless sprayer that your job is prepped and you're ready to go. It's best if you can start and finish the job in one pass. If you do need to take a break, I would suggest soaking the gun and tip in a fresh bucket of water and every now and again circulating that machine to keep a gel from coming up on your paint. Number one problem people have with airless sprayers is only because they took a break for 15 minutes or so and gelled the machine up. Then your day got a little bit longer, you try to work that back out and get going again. Start and finish. I promise you'll love me if you get it done that way. Uh, if you have any issues or other questions that you may have, you're always welcome to call us here at Arvada Rentals. Our phone number 303-422-1212. We'd be happy to help you. Thank you.